Miss Circus Circus with driver Dave Vilwak is back in the fold after leaving hydroplane racing two seasons ago. The returning world champion Miss Budweiser with driver Chip Hanauer in the saddle is up against the stiffest competition ever. ESPN presents the RC Cola 1993 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. The first stop of this series, the Sneaky Peach Texas Hydro Fest. Sponsored by RC Cola. Race to the taste of RC Cola. Me and my RC. By T Plus. Beat the daily grind. Use T Plus, the engine treatment with DuPont Teflon. And by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for a taste, smoothness, and drinkability you'll find in no other beer. Proud to be your Bud. This is beautiful Louisville Lake, 20 miles north of Dallas. The unlimited hydroplanes come to Texas. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Hendrick, along with Dick Crippen. And Dick, in qualifying the last couple of days, more equality in speed. Yeah, Jim, we've seen a lot of new things happen to these boats, both technically and on the surface of the boat where you can see the actual hull designs. So we're going to see a lot of learning in this process. We've already seen the learning in qualification runs. We've seen it in the shootout yesterday. Everybody's testing everything to find out how it's going to react. But I do think we're going to see a lot of good speeds, and I think we'll see a lot more equality up front. Now let's go on down to Steve Montgomery. Well, guys, the Texas Hydro Fest Committee has done a tremendous job here in their first year of turning this beautiful park into an incredible site for unlimited hydroplane racing. Later in the program, I'll be back to show you some of the changes the race teams made over the winter getting ready for the 1993 season. All right, thanks, Steve Montgomery. Dick, you know, yesterday was one of the first of many shootouts that will be held the day before every race and kind of entertains the fans. Jim, this is the starting lineup for the high-low shootout. Miss Budweiser, Winston Eagle, Kellogg's, Frosted Flakes, and Miss Circus Circus. It's, it's kind of a fun race, but this is a good opportunity for these drivers to find out what the boats will do. Miss Budweiser went right out and dominated off the starting line. Winston Eagle driving in second place with Mark Tate. Again, these guys getting a feel of the water. There's the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes boat and Miss Circus Circus. A little bit too much of the feel of the water. Dave Vilwak and crew watched as the boat went down. Miss Budweiser takes the win. It's a $10,000 purse divided among the top three places. The crowd got an opportunity to see something of a tune-up as these boats ready for the big old duel shootout in Hawaii later this year. Now, this is the Winston Select Lap, and it was won in qualifying by the Miss Budweiser at 158 miles per hour, sort of setting the pace for today. And these fans from Sneaky Pete's are certainly ready we visited with owner Steve Woomer at the Winston Eagles shop in Seattle before the season. Was it a rough season last year, Steve? Rough. <laughs> it was disastrous. Uh, I think that the biggest change that the Winston Eagle team has uh, concentrated on this year is to be more consistent. Uh, last year, uh, we set a lot of records and did a lot of things, but we broke a lot. And uh, Our whole philosophy this winter is to make the the team more consistent, the operation more consistent, where we don't break, where we finish every heat, finish every final, and uh, hopefully the results will be good for us. As the opening ceremonies wrap up here at Louisville Lake, let's go to Dick Crippen for some rule changes for 1993. Leading up to the start of a race, they've already qualified. Several days before the actual race, the boats go out. Fastest boat is the fastest qualifier and so on down the line. Once they have established their qualifying speeds, then they draw for heat. Each boat is drawn into a different heat. It could be 1A or 1B. Now, once that boat is in, if it is the fastest boat in the field, that boat then gets choice of lane. They have lane 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, inside to outside. If the boat that it's fastest happens to feel that it handles the best on the inside, probably is going to take the pole position in lane number one. But once that boat has determined his lane, then the second fastest boat in qualifying in that heat gets an opportunity to pick any of the remaining lanes, so on down through five. So it's going to mix it up a lot, and it's going to take a lot more driving strategy coming up. You're going to have fast boats intermingled throughout both heats, so they're going to have to watch out for each other. And we're going to have to watch out for the rain and shifting winds, Dick, right here at Louisville Lake. Weather is deteriorating, but Heat 1A is on schedule with the T+, plus, driven by Steve David from the Miami area. Miss Budweiser, driven by Seattle's Chip Hanauer. 
Miss Circus Circus, Dave Vilwop. Ron Jones Jr., the owner, and America Spirit with Mark Evans. The owner is Fred Leland. Now you 100 will see action, and here they come, Dick. In lane number one, the Miss T Plus is leading the pack up there. Now the American Spirit on the outside is actually the pace boat, so all the drivers have to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're in a line. Coming up for the green flag. It looks like they're going to get it now. Here come the hard charges in the middle. Miss Budweiser trying to take it on the green flag. Right on the outside, the Miss Circus Circus, Dave Vilwat. Heading hard and heavy down into turn number one now. It's going to be a battle between the Miss T Plus on the inside. Right on the right hip of the T Plus is the Budweiser. And it looked like T Plus rode the rooster tail up. She's down in the water. She is sitting right side up. We'll check to see if there's any damage to the boat. The driver apparently is OK. Meanwhile, while the Miss Budweiser has taken the lead. I can see some damage on the right vertical fin. He peeled back because of the force of the water, but the driver is okay. I think the big question mark, Jim, is going to be whether or not there's any stress damage underneath the hull. They'll have to get it in on the trailer for that, but so far things look fairly decent for Steve and David. They look great for Chip Hanauer and the Miss Budweiser, who's really trying to start out the season winning everything in sight if he can. Second place is the Miss Circus Circus. 142.9 for Miss Budweiser on the first lap, Dick. As we look at the second place boat, the Miss Circus Circus. Third is the Dallas Motor Coach with Mark Evans driving. As we look at our leader once again, the Miss Polydyne with Mitch Evans having fuel problems did not start. And the Miss T-Plus on the infield now watching the boats go by. You see the Circus Circus on your screen. Now, this boat has had a lot of work during the offseason. It's, it's new. It's got different wing configurations than the other hydroplanes out there. They can adjust a lot of the wings. They can adjust some of them from inside. We'll talk later with Dave Vilwak a little bit more about that boat, but it is really in a test run out here now, and it's being tested against one of the best boats on the circuit, one of the most consistent boats, the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, out of Seattle, Washington, and he certainly has a beautiful, beautiful ride in the boat right Right now as we look at the circus circus he's wetting more bottom surface than usual otherwise a little nose heavy they may have that boat glued down the water dick this is one of the things that they'll try to correct during the day of racing so that'll be one of the boats to watch out there i think that uh, the miss budweiser looks like she is just about perfection very very good qualifying speeds very good in the shootout that we saw earlier and this boat I have to tell you, give Circus Circus crews a lot of credit to have that boat running like they are in the very first race of the season, as radically new as the design is, I think is quite a credit. No sooner did we said that he was glued to the water, you, you see he starts to loosen up. So he is playing with the tabs in the front now to get the front end loose. As we look at our third place boat, the Dallas Motor Coach American Spirit. This is a boat that had a big win last year and certainly one that they will treasure and go for to repeat again this year. Here is the winner. The checkered flag is out. Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, and we'll come back to talk to Chip Hanauer and find out about the conditions in just a moment. Welcome back to Louisville Lake outside of Dallas, Texas. Dick Crippen along with Jim Hendrick and Steve Montgomery. As we look at the results from Heat 1A, it's the Miss Budweiser in first, Circus Circus, and then American Spirit. Miss T Plus did not finish. Polydyne Engine Specialty Corporation problems did not start. Jim? Always good to get that first win under your belt. Well, it is, and we have to use these heats to learn. Uh, we want to progress the Budweiser so that when we get to the final, it's the best possible boat that it can be, and we have to use these as learning experiences. Down in pit row in the T-plus area, the crew is pulling out some spare parts as Steve David and his boat are being towed back to the pit area. Let's go down for the story with Dick Crippen. Jeff, what are they, what are they doing? Well, the preliminary reports is that we got some right bearing damage on the boat. We had a spare, took it off our backup boat, and hopefully that's all the damage we got. Yeah, you really won't know till the boat gets in. Right, right. We're waiting now. There's, they said they'd expedite it, and we'll see when it gets here. A fairing is simply a wing on the back that goes up and down, and it holds the horizontal stabilizer wing that you see on the back of these boats. That'll join in right at these three spots. This is the new one that is off of the other boat, and they're going to get it ready to put on the T-plus when it comes in. Reportedly, that is the only damage that's done to the boat. They're hopeful there may be some cracks underneath that they can't see. We'll just have to wait until the boat gets in. As we've said many times, many races are won by the crew for their work, and I'm sure the T-plus crew will be prepared to re-enter the race. Now there have been some changes. In 1993, here's Steve Montgomery. 
Changes in the Unlimited fleet for 1993 are many and very dramatic, with one of the biggest being right here, the return of pink and white. Circus Circus won the national championship in 1990, then retired from the sport. Dave Vilwak was the crew chief on that effort. Last year, Ron Jones Marine of Seattle debuted this radically designed new two-wing boat with Dave Vilwak as the driver, and as the Coors Dry, they won the race in San Diego. Now, once again, they fly the colors of Circus Circus Enterprises of Las Vegas. A trick new paint job is the most obvious change here in the T-plus camp, but changes over the winter by Jim Harvey and crew in Seattle in the aerodynamics and hydrodynamics have improved Steve David's ride in the boat they campaigned last year. Parked next door here in the Dallas pit is a radically designed new two-wing boat, which the T-plus team will debut later this season. Tiger stripes have replaced the traditional Miss Madison color scheme on Mike Hansen's ride. In the engine room, it'll be larger, more powerful C-series turbines, and officially, the boat is now the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Mark Evans makes major changes over the winter in the American Spirit Racing Team, moving himself and his Captain America paint job to the boat which last year ran as the Miss Rock. So Mark has a new owner, Fred Leland, and a new number, U-100. In 1992, Dr. Ken Muscatel of Seattle drove the Hawaii-based Ms. Pog. Over the winter, he and Bob Thomas of Detroit put together a brand new racing team using this hull, the U-55, one of the original and oldest of the turbine-powered hydroplanes. For Ronnie Brown and the Budweiser team, as always, both boats very nearly completely rebuilt over the winter. The biggest visible change, a new, innovative, shorter tailpipe. It comes and goes with the engine, making changes quicker, reduces the weight on the back of the boat, and most importantly, Importantly, perhaps, the team feels it has improved the aerodynamics of Miss Budweiser, particularly in the turns. As we prepare for Heat 1B, we want to thank Colonel John Mills and his Army Corps troop for their fine hospitality here on Louisville Lake. Tim, looking at the lineup in lane number one, it'll be the Winston Eagle, the U-10, with Mark Tate driving. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, the U-6, will be in lane number two. That's Mike Hansen. George Woods aboard the Tide boat. U-8 will be in lane three. And U-55 will be in lane four. That's Superior Racing, Ken Muscatel. Looking at the start, we see only three of the four boats out there, Jim. The report for the pits is that Superior Racing, the starter is malfunctioning. They will not be in the seat. All right, a sad break for that racing team. We'll see if they can get it going later. There is the green flag, and we're off with Winston Eagle taking the lead on the inside. Watch out for the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes coming up and riding hip to hip with them. And the tie boat is not backing off at all on the far outside. Down into turn one, though, it will be the Winston Eagle taking the lead. He's got the inside track now as he hangs it on a skid fin. That keeps him really tight in lane number one. But watch your second place boat. He's hidden in that rooster tail, Dick. It's hard to see him, but indeed, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is right behind him, just about a boat length and a half off. You can see him now. He's hidden in that veil, the rooster tail. Mike Hansen getting a great ride out of that. E Whoa, a little bit of looseness for the Winston Eagle coming down into three and four. He'll have to be careful. On the outside, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes boat is hanging right with him. I think Mike Hansen's finding that new paint job is making him faster. You'll never lose track of that boat with that paint job this year. 143.258. Lap number one, the fastest competitive lap of the day so far goes to the Winston Eagle as we're in lap two of three lappers. Winston Eagle still in command. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in second place. And the tied boat, George Woods, we haven't talked about it, but that boat is in a very close third place. He is not letting up. He's not being satisfied with position. This Texas Thunderfest crew has done a great job racing here for the very first time. They're all a sneaky beats. They're going to celebrate. It takes volunteers, and volunteers have made this race, and we're going to be here for some time to come. Well, you saw the hard-charging tide boat coming on the outside of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, still sitting back about a boat length or two. Meanwhile, Winston Eagle got through turn three and four in lap number two a lot easier than he did the first time around. He's got to be careful. Apparently, this wind that consistently is going up and down on the course is making a difference specifically in that turn. The wind swirls here in this part of Texas. They have to be careful. It could be a tailwind one lap and hit you right in the face the next lap. Meanwhile, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, Mike Hansen continues to keep the pressure on the lead boat. The leader is the Winston Eagle, Mark Tate, out of Detroit, Michigan area. And here he comes into the turn. This was where he got a little bit light last time around, and he does it again. He holds onto the boat. Now, the boat runs fine, but again, they're going to have to check it over for stress. That takes a tremendous hit. 
And the winner at Heat 1B at an average of 140.712 is Mark Tate, and he gets 400 points for the Winston Eagle team. Kellogg second, tied third. Let's go to Dick Rippin in the pits. All right, Mark. Well, it's a little bit cleaner now. They got some of the oil off. What happened out there? Uh, one of the uh, oil lines uh, coming from the gearbox up to the gauge broke loose. It was just spraying oil over me the whole race, and really couldn't see out of my whole right side of my eye. It was just uh, I'm just totally oil soaked. The ride itself, a rather rough one. Yeah, the water conditions are extremely rough out there. Uh, coming into corners three and four, the boat got extremely light the one time and came down real hard and busted the rear winglet off. But uh, Winston Eagle crew will have her back out there. We'll be ready for the rest of the day. We'll continue with more action from the Sneaky Feet Texas Hydrofest, the RC Cola Honey Plane Series, in just a moment. Just outside of Dallas, Texas, what a great place to hold an unlimited hydroplane race. The Lake Louisville area in Denton County, Texas, is part of the thriving North Texas metropolis that includes the cities of Dallas and Fort Worth. Denton County is the fastest growing county in the state, the fifth fastest growing county in the United States. Only 20 minutes north of Dallas and merely nine minutes from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, Louisville offers the ideal site for business and industry. Business and industry of all types call Louisville area home. From telecommunications to transportation, computers to retail, commerce thrives in a positive business climate. Just as business has found a home in Louisville, so have many individuals and families. The Denton County area offers a quality of life that blends big city amenities with easygoing hometown America. At the center of it all is Lake Louisville. This 23,000 acre lake is popular with recreational boaters, fishermen, and anyone who likes to have fun on the water. Louisville, Texas, the newest stop on the RC Cola Unlimited Hydroplane Tour, and a great place to live and work. Ask any one of these folks, they'll tell you it's a great place to be. These are the folks that are at Sneaky Pete's, and it wouldn't be complete to come to Lake Louisville and not stop by Sneaky Pete's. Let's go to the pits and Jim Hendrick. We're down here at the National Defending Champion Camp, Miss Budweiser. You know this guy, Bernie Little. And Bernie, your boats are placed one and two in qualifying. Yeah, you are the defender. But you look a little confident, but I'm not too sure you're not going to have more competition this year. Yeah, we really are. Uh, we're glad to see Winston running good and strong. They always do. T-plus will be hard to beat. Uh, of course, Circus Circus, as you know, was a one, one team that beat us one year. We won't let that happen again, Jim, but anyhow, they did, and uh, probably be the best year of racing that we've had in a long time. We'll find out about the Miss Budweiser in a few moments. Heat 2A has the Tide, Miss Circus Circus, American Spirit, Dallas Motor Coach, Miss T Plus, and Polydyne Engine Specialties. Here they come. We have four boats in competition as the wind continues to kick up here on Louisville Lake, and on the outside, it looks like T Plus. T-Plus does take it on the start, but just barely the tie boat on the inside. And it looks like Circus Circus is coming up between the two of them. As they go down into turn number one, a little bit light for Steve David out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He gets it back down on the water. It grabs it. Now you can see how close the tide is. On the inside, George Woods gets bounced around a little bit. But the T-Plus has taken it now. Circus Circus comes right between the two of them. So it is in the lead, first off. T plus, second place, Circus Circus, third place, the Tide Boat, and there is less than a boat length between each of them. There's Circus Circus coming up on the inside. We have a battle side by side, deck to deck, and look at that rooster tail come off of the outside boat on your left, the T plus. Jim, the boat looked very light going into the turn, but the skid fin did its job and held the boat on the water. Meanwhile, Circus Circus takes over the lead. It was interesting because we commented earlier that this boat looked like it was a little nose heavy. They must have adjusted the wings a little bit to get it lighter. It's riding perfectly on the water right now. To ride perfect, Nick, about nine square inches of each sponson is all that should touch the water, half the prop, and it looks like they have the boat trimmed out now as he has the lead here on lap number two. He is being challenged, however. The tide boat is not backed off. There is about a seven boat lead out there, but as they close in on the turns, you'll see tide close in and get in position to possibly strike again. Meanwhile, don't count out Stephen David and the repaired T+. -plus. We must remind everybody that in the first race, they tore off one of those vertical wings. Now, you see the circus circus come through there, you wonder, how does the boat even stay on the water? It looks like it's going to go off and fly. And they can fly. These boats do not know they're not an airplane, and we've seen them fly in the past. In fact, the Circus Circus, a few years ago, flew at San Diego. 
Lap number two, 142.9 miles an hour. So he's picked up the pace. We're on the final lap. The checker flag is winning. Dave Vilwak, who has driven the Limiteds for many, many years, has himself in good position for a win in the Unlimiteds. There's the American Spirit Dallas Motor Coach boat that is driven by Mark Evans in fourth place. This is the lead boat, pink and white. This will make the fans in Las Vegas very happy. The boat from Circus Circus is the lead boat. Second is the Tide, driven by George Woods Jr. He's done a fine job in that boat also. It's going to be a contender. Here comes the checkered flag out. Pink and white will take it all the way from the black and white checkered flag. Miss Circus Circus, Dave Vilwak takes the win in Heat 2A. So there are your winners, Circus Circus, the Tide second, Miss T plus third, American Spirit in fourth, and Polydyne Specialties did not start. We'll be back with Heat 2B when we return to Louisville Lake outside Dallas in just a moment. The rain continues to fall here on Louisville Lake. Let's go to Dick Crippen and the winner of Heat 2A. This has not been real easy. You've had a lot of problem coming into this, and to reach this point that fast, I think it's got to make you feel awfully good. Uh, we feel real good. There's some real competitive boats out there. I mean, the T-plus and uh, the Tide were running real hard. It was a real boat race. Uh, we had to struggle with some equipment. Uh, just as a new, any, uh, any new NFL or uh, NBA team, uh, they have to learn to gel, and, and we had some equipment problems, and the team's starting to come together, and we're getting stronger and stronger, and we're looking forward to a good day. So Circus Circus wins their first heat of the year, and their owner, Ron Jones Jr., was raring to go several weeks ago when we visited him in his office in Seattle. We've been anxious for six months for the first race. I mean, we want to get there. We want to get to Dallas, the Sneaky Pete Hydro Fest, and we want to, you know, we're ready. We, we worked hard, and we got the boat ready, and uh, um, we're looking forward to this season. Rain and shifting winds continue, and Jim Seymour and his volunteers have had to work extra hard to keep this race course ready. We're set to go, heat to be. Here's the lineup in lane number one. It'll be the U-10, the Winston Eagle, Miss Budweiser in lane number two, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in lane three, and Superior Racing on the outside in lane number four. As they come down for the start, they look for the green flag off the starting tower, and there it is, Miss Budweiser right on the money. Chip Panauer has taken a lead, Frosted Flakes on the outside from Kellogg's, and that looks like your race, but there's a boat on the inside. More than likely, it is the Winston Eagle. It is the Winston Eagle on the inside in second place. So it's going to be a battle for second now between the Winston Eagle and Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Miss Budweiser is alone in first. That's about the fastest any boat has gone down the chute here today. As the rain continues to fall, as Chip Anor said earlier, the rain doesn't bother us, but the wind does. They'll have to be careful about that wind coming into three and four also, because that's where these boats were getting loose, especially the Winston Eagle earlier. You can see the Budweiser kind of bobble out there for just a moment. He got it right back down on the water, and once again, she's in a good attitude. So the Miss Budweiser is your lead boat. Second place on the inside is the Winston Eagle, and third place, just a little bit off the pace, is the Kellogg's Frosted Flake, Mike Hansen of Madison, Indiana. 146.5 mile an hour at lap number one, and Superior Racing, we're hearing from the pits, is not in the race. They have a problem with the canopy. Only about two boat lights separate first and second, but the Winston Eagle has gone down. We don't know what happened to the boat. It looks like it's okay, except something's gone wrong with the engine, apparently. So the Winston Eagle, Mark Tate, shuts the engine down, decides to let it float into the infield. Now Miss Budweiser is unchallenged immediately. However, this should open it up for the Kellogg's Frosted Flake to move up. She's already in second place. Well, he'll certainly try to close it down. The driver has communications with his crew in the pits, and we're getting the word that the engine gauge has said he was going to get really hot and could hurt the engine. So he voluntarily shut the engine of the Winston Eagle down. So Winston Eagle is out, and this is the boat that's in second place with that wild, wild tiger paint job, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, trying to catch this boat, the red and white Miss Budweiser. Chip Panauer out of Seattle, Washington, doing a great job. You know, he put that boat over twice at the end of last year at better than 200 miles an hour each time. He came out with a couple of cracked ribs and a lot of soreness, but boy, he gets right back into it. He just forgets all about that, and he puts the pedal to the metal, as they say. The S word he doesn't like. 
San Diego and Seattle. Both S's <laughs> is where he crashed. The checker flag is winning now. He's averaging over 138 mile an hour. And we remind you again that that means the speeds have to be a lot higher on the straightaways because these boats slow down in the turns a little bit and the friction itself takes its toll. Miss Budweiser takes the win. Kellogg's crossed at Flake second. Winston Eagle did not finish. Superior Racing did not start. Does the rain affect you all out there? No, the rain is no problem at all. Wind is a big problem, but rain makes it uncomfortable for the spectators, but it's no worries for us. Bernie, they say they have a swirling wind. Now, the wind didn't blow up till they're about a lap away from starting. It was calm, and all of a sudden the wind comes up. You have to worry in that situation. Oh, sure we do. Uh, I just told Chip as it went out, the rain had calmed it down. There was no wind, and I just told him that as he closed the canopy. Then the wind came up again. The rain don't bother, says Chip said, but uh, we're in there. He drove the devil out of it, and... Uh, we're going to be in there for a first place. The RC Cola Unlimited Hydroplane Series from Louisville Lake, Texas will continue in just a moment. As the fans get ready for more racing here in Louisville, Texas, let's you and I take a moment and go down to the pit area for our T-plus performance corner, an inside look at unlimited hydroplane racing. Hi, I'm Steve David. Welcome to the cockpit of an unlimited hydroplane. What's above my head comes from an F-16 canopy, and what's next to me is made out of Kevlar and carbon fiber. This is the latest safety advance from unlimited hydroplanes to make drivers like myself safe in the event of a crash. Let's take a look inside the cockpit, and we'll talk about some of the instrument gauges. The instrumentation is really basic. To begin with, the speedometer, oil pressure gauges for the gearbox, and a, basically a tachometer for a turbine. You notice it all slanted, that's so in a quick glance. If everything up is around noon, we know the engines are working okay and I don't have to worry about anything but driving. What you're seeing now is called the canard wing. When it's up like this, it keeps the bow down in the event we have a lot of headwind. When we're running downwind, it goes down like so and it gives the driver control to try and prevent the boat from what we call blowing over or basically going over backwards. What powers a modern unlimited hydroplane is a turbine engine. It's basically a shaft jet that's connected to a gearbox. The prop shaft then goes back underneath the boat and it's connected to a propeller. The tube here is really just to dissipate heat. It's not jet thrust like you'd have in an airplane. Troy here is working on what's called the hot section of the engine, which is the section that produces the power to make the boat go forward. Thanks for joining us this week on Unlimited Hydroplanes 101. Join us next week for a wrap up and a test. Lots of volunteers, including civic organizations. Here's the Louisville Fire Department standing ready, and we thank the police department for their cooperation on this race also. Here's the lineup for Heat 3A. The Tide, Miss Budweiser, the T-Plus, Winston Eagle, and Paladine Engine. And that's the way they're going to line up on the course in their respective lanes. The inside lane going to the Tide to the right of your screen as we look down from our helicopter shot. Watch the boats as they come down into turn number one. It's going to be a good run. It's Miss Budweiser fighting the T-plus. You just met Stephen David, who did our T-plus performance corner, and there he goes, trying to take the lead away from the red and white Miss Budweiser. Chip Hanauer now really has a battle on his hands. Steve David doing a great job to the right of your screen in the yellow and black boat. Neck and neck as they come down the back stretch, and there you can see the tremendous power of the Miss Budweiser as Chip Hanauer takes it into the lead as he goes into turns three and four. Now the boat just tipped a little bit going in, but both of them look side by side, very steady on the course. This is indicative of the type of competition we're going to have this year. Lots of boats have improved. It's not necessarily a Miss Budweiser year this year. This team is improved right along the T-plus, and he's challenging. 141.1 on the Miss Budweiser for a lap speed. They are now on lap number two. They race three laps in preliminaries, five laps in the final. So T-plus keeps the pressure on. Miss Budweiser is the lead boat, but T-plus is sitting right in the back of that rooster tail, just off the back end of the Miss Budweiser. Meanwhile, the tide boat is right up in there. Tide has moved up onto the inside of the T-plus, and it's going to be a challenge race for second place. Miss Budweiser has no competition out front. She's concerned about everything behind. Winston Eagle is still fighting it out, trying to get up into that pack. Winston Eagle got a little bit of a rough start and was not able to catch the rest of the pack once they took off, but he'll hold solid in fourth place for this race at this point. Miss Budweiser coming down. There's your challenge on the outside by the T-plus, and you can just barely see a little bit of a nick of the tide as he continues to close in on T-plus. Now, Winston Eagle last year did not win a race. 
They were disappointed. This year, Steve Woomer says, we want to be consistent. I think they will be. It was an amazing season because they actually set some records in qualifying and such, and everybody thought that they were going to be the fast boat. But sometimes when you go that hard, you break things, and they broke last year. Here's the tide boat, George Woods Jr. He's closing in on the back end of the T-plus. T-plus goes far to the outside. Tide comes up on the inside. Your lead boat is the Miss Budweiser. A lot of eyes are focusing now on second place. There is the checkered flag for the Miss Budweiser. Chip Chip Hanauer will take the win. Tide has now passed into second place. So Tide will finish second. T-plus will finish third. What a great race for second as George Woods Jr. claims 300 points. Miss Budweiser takes the win. Miss T-plus third. Winston Eagle fourth. Polydyne specialties did not start. Actually, you come right down to it. Every time you go up, the wind changes on this course. Yeah, I think it changes two or three times while we're out there. It's what it's doing at the dock. And then when you start the motor, have nothing in common. I noticed that some of the boats would fly off of a corner and one time the wind turns around, you got the wind coming down the back chute the wrong way. Yeah, it's just a mess out there and you, you, there's nothing predictable. So I think that's how you have to drive is just taking everything uh, as being temporary and know that's going to change. Bernie, any strategy now for your team for the final? Well, yeah, we have some. It's so secret that I don't know it and neither does Chip. But we'll, we'll work on it, and uh, we'll be in there for the final, Jim. Thank you. These fans were certainly excited by the finish by the Miss Budweiser, but I think equally excited for the Tide in that second-place finish. Let's go to Jim Hendricks and a special guest. Down here in the pit area with Don Jones. Don, the first time we've been in this area, the state of Texas. What do you think of this course? Well, I've said all along that this is going to be our premier race site. They've done a wonderful job here. Uh, the city, county, and all the volunteers and... MEI have done just a wonderful time here, and as you can see, the crowd is going to be very, very large. Do you think you will give them more competition than we did last year? Has there been some equality in speeds? Well, I believe so. Uh, they've all worked hard over the winter time. A lot of them have hired uh, specialists in the motor programs. Uh, they've all been doing a little aerodynamics on the boat. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the most competitive seasons we've had. More racing action in the Snakey Peach Texas Hydrofest in the RC Cola Unlimited Hydroplane Series coming up. As we look down on the huge spectator fleet here at Louisville Lake, all these fans getting ready for Heat 3B. Let's take a look at the lineup. It's going to be in lane one, American Spirit, Mark Evans. Miss Circus Circus will be in lane two, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, lane three. And rounding out the field, Superior Racing in lane four. But as we look at the start and they take the green flag, there's only two boats. It's going to be a drag race. What a drag race, though. These two boats are very, very equal. It's Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, Mike Hansen out of Madison, Indiana, in the lead as they go down into the turn. But look at Circus Circus right on the inside, pink and white. And it's going to be Circus Circus. Dave Vilwak will take the lead coming out of turn number two and Mike Hansen is not letting up on him at all. Not at all. Good competition coming right down the back chute heading for corner number three. Mike Hansen in the Kellogg's Foster Flakes right on my right hip of the circus circus. Two boats that are driving this close in speed and power they have got to respect each other as drivers and that's one thing we can say about all of the drivers on the circuit. They do respect each other just like in NASCAR racing or an SCCA racing, IMSA, or what have you, you've got to respect the other drivers out there and know that they're going to do their best to hold their lane, and especially in this where the boats tend to slide out on the turns. When you're traveling about 300 foot a second, that's over 200 miles an hour in the straightaway, not only respect, you have to trust the other guy. And these two drivers certainly trust each other. There's Mike Hansen in the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Second place, your lead boat. There you see it, pink and white. Circus Circus Dave Vilwat. The Superior Racing Team, U55 Turbin, acting up for Ken Muscatel with starter problems earlier. Now they cannot get the canopy to operate functionally so that he can be safe when he races. And engine problems, the Dallas Motor Coach Held out of this race, Mark Evans not in competition. A beautiful shot as out of turn number four comes the Circus Circus. This team back on the race circuit again. Dave Vilwak getting the checkered flag from the starter's tower, but a good effort by the second place team, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. And as we told you, American Spirit did not start, neither did Superior Racing. Now let's go down to the pits right now to the winner's circle. Well, Dave, uh, you've been trying different things all day, even put a new prop on right before this one. Have you got the combination it's going to need? Yeah, that's not the one. I mean, we know that. <laughs> so we're going to go back to some other things that we did earlier when we uh, set the course record. Um, 
So the team's working real well. Dan Walters, uh, all the guys on the team, really gelling. You know, it's, and it's really good for me to see that, you know, as our team's coming together and we're growing and doing better and better as we go. Weather is improving. We're getting close to the finals of this, the Sneaky Feet Texas Hydra Fest. We'll be back in a moment. During the offseason, a lot of work is done on these hydroplanes, and we went to Seattle and visited George Woods Jr. in the shop for the Tide and asked him what it's going to take to go from number two to number one. I think the answer for the Tide team to win the national championship this year, not only consistency, but commitment. I think this year our race team, along with uh, some new personnel, Nate Brown, he's going to really add a, a new spectrum to our race team. And I think that our whole team is just committed to winning. Not only have we had the Tide now for the second year, which has given us uh, time to build up our program to get it what we feel up to the potential that we've always had, but never been able to really capitalize on it. This year, I believe that we are going to come out running hard. Right from the beginning, we are going to be consistent, and we're going to win some races. Well, we've got a chance in the championship heat coming up in just a little while. Right now, we're going to turn our attention to the last chance heat. Now, this gives the boats an opportunity to qualify for that final heat. These are three boats that do not have enough points to move into the final heat. Whichever boat wins in this one will move into the trailer position in the championship field. We only have two boats that are actually going to take the start. Neither one of these boats have started earlier today. We have, first of all, the superior racing team boat, Kent Muscatel, that's the blue and yellow boat on the inside. Mitch Evans is on the outside in the polydyne boat. So let's watch these two drag race down. They don't know what these boats can do. Neither one of them have really been out on the race course yet today. The boat on the inside, the yellow and blue boat, has a great history. It has been, well, it started out as the pay and pack boat, went through Cellular One and several others. Now it is the Superior Racing Team. Ken Muscatel, he's got a bevy of owners interested in this boat because it's kind of a historical boat. He himself has been very interested in the history of unlimited hydroplane racing. So he got back in and actually took over the cockpit last year. There you see the Polydyne engine boat. That is the only piston boat in the field. Everything else is turbine. Don't count this boat out on the main circuit. Here comes the Polydyne boat in second place. And this, of course, the leader is Ken Muscatel. Ken doing a good job for Superior Racing. He is going to take the checkered flag, I believe, and qualify. Yes, there it is. The checkered is out. He qualifies as the trailer boat in the championship field. That's an exciting nope, moment yep. for Ken Muscatel, no question about it. Right you know, now. there's a lot of superstitions in this field. Let's talk to Mike Hansen about some of his. Well, this is my adopted mother. Carol Hughes here. She takes care of all the good luck that this race team has. Over the years, we hadn't had much. We started out with pennies. Uh, good luck pennies. She finally ground. Went to four leaf clovers. She still needed more luck. So she brought me a troll, as you can see in the cockpit, that has been in there since Seattle last year. I wouldn't let the crew remove it all winter long. I had to stay in there during all the rebuilding and modify into the boat as well as the paintwork. So it's been in there since uh, August of 91. That's my good luck charm. It won't ever leave me. Mike Hansen and Carol Hughes, and we're going to be back with our championship heat in the Sneaky Pete's Texas Hydro Fest in just a moment. Well, this is it. Back on Louisville Lake to Crippen, along with Jim Hendrick and Steve Montgomery, as we get ready for the final championship heat of the Sneaky Pete's Hydro Fest. George Woods Jr. will take the tide into lane number one. Lane number two will be the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer. He likes lane two. Miss Circus Circus will be right outside him on the right. He'll be in lane three. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in lane four. Lane five will be the Winston Eagle on the outside. Lane six will be the Miss T Plus. Stephen David of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, running very strong. And the trailer boat will be the U55 Superior Racing coming in from the last chance. Here are your boats as we come down for the green flag. Look at that lineup. Boy, have you got some horsepower there. I believe this is the largest final field of turbine engines ever in unlimited hydroplanes. You've got all turbine engines out there, seven boats. It's a lot of horsepower, Jim. 
We're going to be one less in the field right now. The Budweiser will be out of action. He just hooked to the left and hit the tide in the right quarter panel. The Budweiser is taking on water as they come up for the start. Budweiser is down in corner number two, trying to get off the course. There he is, Chip Anhauer. Oh, he has won everything all day today. He has hurt that left Sponson. He's taking on water. He's on the starter. He's going to get off the course. We're about to do that start right now, minus this Budweiser. Well, that's a main challenger out of the field, but certainly some fast boats remain, and it's going to even the field out just a little bit as they come down. They take the green flag, and they're off heading down into turn number one. It looks like T-plus on the outside. Stephen David of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, riding hard on the pedal. He is going to take the lead on the outside. Now, remember the boat on the outside of the course has more course to cover. Circus Circus very hard on the inside. Dave Philwock trying to close him down as they hit the straightaway. As we look at our leader, the Winston Eagle went across the starting line first. Is down in corner number one, dead in the water. And we're getting a report by radio. He lost the propeller. Stephen David doesn't know that at this point. He's just concentrating on one thing, and that's staying ahead of Circus Circus. And you can see it is a battle out there. Stephen David still on the outside, holding his lane. Very important. Got a little bit loose as he comes down by the start-finish line. Steve David doing a good job and putting it right on the ragged edge. Waves a little bit to the crowd. Comes down. He's loving it, you can tell. Steve David, a national champion in many limited boats, has yet to win an unlimited event. This could be his first. He has certainly run well in the T-plus all day long. That boat has been a tremendous challenge to the field all the way across. And this boat, Circus Circus, has come out on this course and done some phenomenal things. It went from being nose-heavy to light, and now it's riding fine. Mark Tate, very disappointed. You see the cockpit coming up on that boat. That boat dead in the water. Winston Eagle, disappointed, I know. There's Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in third place. That's Mike Hansen out of Madison, Indiana. Another boat that has made tremendous tremendous strides in the offseason. As we look at our number two place boat, the Circus Circus, he's going to be challenged by Kellogg's. And if we look at our leader now, the bleeding lap, number two of five. This is a five lapper. I'm going to bet that if you talk to Steve David after this race, I'm going to bet he's going to tell you that boat is designed to ride light like that. He, That's the way they believe it. He has a brand new boat that was to be in this race, but they had an accident with the truck hauling it, so this is last year's model. And we might also add that that's a repaired model because it had some damage done early on. There's the tide boat, George Woods Jr. riding in fourth place right at the moment. Seems to be a little bit content, going to see if possibly he can let those other guys knock each other out and move up in the field. Let me tell you, he has extensive damage on the right rear. He cannot go as fast as usual. Parts are coming off the boat. That's because of that collision with the Miss Budweiser earlier on. Apparently, the Miss Budweiser hooking in front of the tide boat. I don't think there'll be any blame uh, placed on any drivers in that particular situation. Right Here comes now, the challenge. Here comes the challenge. Right. On the outside, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. It is Mike Hansen passing up Circus Circus. We just commented how well that boat has run in this first race. And you can see the power he's finding. This boat partially owned by the folks of Madison, Indiana, and I know right now they are thrilled to death with the way that boat is going. They're fighting into corner number two here on lap number three as we look at our leader about to pass the Superior Racing Team and lap Ken Muscatel, who was the trailer boat. We're now getting word from the URC radio that the Circus Circus is penalized an extra lap for a lane encroachment against Kellogg's. That moves the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes to second. All right, I, that should be going out onto the course by radio to Mike Hansen right at this moment. We'll see now if he takes up the challenge, the gauntlet, if you will, from the lead boat. And this is the lead boat here, black and yellow in color, and riding a little bit on the light side, but the driver loving it, Stephen David. There is the boat that was just penalized for an encroachment. That's kind of disappointing, but as we say, these boats slide on the turn. Sometimes they do it, and it's very unintentional. Well, you saw a problem with the Miss Budweiser just prior to the start, hooking to the left, suffering extensive damage to the left Sponson in the front, and then causing extensive damage to the right rear of the Tide, who is running awfully slow. George Woods just trying to finish this race for points. 
There you see Ken Muscatel's boat. Now, I know that Ken would like to be up running in the front, but right now he's probably happy to just be competing. That is the trailer boat. He got into this field because the only race that he was able to get into all day, he won, and that was the last chance coming in. There's your checkered flag up off the starter's tower. It is the Miss Team Plus for the first unlimited hydroplane racing win for Stephen David of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This crew repaired the boat, got it ready. What a moment. We'll be back with more action on the winning driver interview from Louisville Lake after this timeout. Back here on Louisville Lake, just outside Dallas, Texas, Miss T plus the winner today. Kellogg second, followed by the Tide, Circus Circus, and Superior Racing. Lots of fun had by all here just outside Dallas, but nobody had more fun than the winner. Steve David, let's go down to Dick Crippen in the pits. Well, Steve, I don't know what to tell you. I saw your face when you came in. I think I saw it on the out on the course. Oh, God. It was a, oh, there's one of many. Huh? Oh, man. You know, <laughs> you we said if uh, you can't win them all if you don't win the first. But this team, after doing what I did the first heat, making that error, and, and these guys building that boat to come back like it did in this final, T-plus and every one of these guys are just the very best. Well, Steve, I'll tell you, this crew really did work to bring that boat back. You did have some problems. You had some structural damage. Obviously, you trust the crew tremendously, but they knew what you could do also. Oh, yeah, I trust this crew with my life. I mean, I do. I go out and I don't worry about anything. But driving the, the T-plus as fast and as hard as I can because I know they've done the right thing. Harvey is the owner. Tim Rams is crew chief. And Tom and Jim and Bob and Jeff and Bruce and, and Troy, they're the best. So Steve David collects his checkered flag and unlimited racing for the very first time, an honor well-deserved. And a guy who really, really has put a lot into unlimiteds, he's paid his dues, is the owner, Jim Harvey. Dick Griffin is down with him now. Let's go back to the pits. Well, Jim, I'll tell you, this was about as good as you could get. Oh, Dick, uh, the T-plus left Seattle late. We're trying to get a new boat done. We came here a day late. We didn't get the run until yesterday. We blow a motor yesterday. I mean, I just saw everything unraveling. But these guys stayed together, and, and we got better each run. And I could see the team coming back into its mold. And when it came to for the final, they were ready. Well, this crew certainly has had its work cut out for it. And there probably aren't better wins, but there could be easier ones. A lot easier, but, uh, you know, it's just the way it happens. Uh, we started in lane six uh, as the pace boat, and uh, it just happened to be the right place. The weather changed, the water calmed down, the boat ride improved, and uh, we were ready. So the first race of the RC Cola Hydroplane Series goes into the record books. Here's the high point standings. Remember, the top three point getters will be racing for the O'Toole Shootout in Honolulu, the very last race of the year. If you want more information on the Unlimiteds, write to the Unlimited Commission, 414 Pontius Avenue North, Sweet C, Seattle, or call 206-467-1368. What an exciting day of racing to open up this RC Cola Heidi Plain Series. The boats not only had the battle themselves, but the weather as well. Yeah, weather was a very important part of this, and as a result, the learning experience was perhaps greater than they even wanted it to be, but I think they did learn a lot. That's kind of been the motto of the day, learn as much as you can. Now they go on from here to the next series of races. I think we're going to see constant improvement. And, of course, that big Gold Cup comes up next week, Steve. Jim, we talked about the work the crews did over the winter. Now a little fixing to do, as they say here in Texas. The back end of the tide needs some work. The front end of the Budweiser. Next week in Detroit, they'll be 100%. And we'll all be there. I'm behalf of Dick Crippen, Steve Montgomery, I'm Jim Hendricks. So long. Sneaky Pete's Texas Hydro Fest has been sponsored by RC Cola. Race to the taste of RC Cola. Me and my RC. By T Plus. Beat the daily grind. Use T Plus, the engine treatment with DuPont Teflon. And by Budweiser Beachwood Age for a taste, smoothness, and drinkability. Proud to be your bud. A promotional consideration has been provided by the Radisson Hotel of Denton, Texas, with 150 guest rooms, conference and banquet facilities, health room, pool, and 18-hole golf course. The Denton Radisson, your hotel for business or fun. This event is sanctioned by the American Powerboat Association. This has been a production of Diamond P Sports in association with ESPN.